Hey, what's up motivators? Taryn here. If you're thinking about taking the pedals off of your road bike, switching up to some different pedals, maybe you have to do a little bit of mechanical work on your pedals, and you don't have the special tools required to change those pedals, we are going to go through two different types of road bike pedals that you might have on your bike how to remove them without any special tools, and how to do it properly so that you don't end up with problems down the road. Stick around for it. My name is Taryn Gazelle. In my 20s, I was overweight, unfulfilled, and couldn't even run to the end of the block. Over the following years, I found endurance sports, lost 65 pounds, won age groups, raced world championships, broke records, and trained and learned from some of the best athletes and coaches in the world. You too can use endurance sports to change your life and accomplish your fitness goals. You just need a system. A system that's meant for us amateurs who wanna be our best while feeling our strongest and healthiest. My company Motive offers that system and I wanna share some of the tips from it today. Hey Motivator, all right, I've got a Canyon Ultimate Road Bike here and then a Canyon Grail Gravel Bike over there. I've got a couple of different pedals, but Basically, when you get any sort of bike, you're going to get flat pedals like this. They're going to come alongside the bike. This isn't ideal if you wanna be safe, if you wanna ride fairly hard, like with any sort of purpose, you wanna do any sort of structure. Why these aren't great is because your foot can slip off, they're not aerodynamic. Being clipped into a bike is one of the best things that you can do to develop your bike handling. It might feel a little bit odd at the start, but you only have three points of contact on a bike, on your butt, on your hands, and on the feet. And the more solid you can make that connection with the bike, the safer you're going to be and the more power you're going to actually transfer from the energy that you're putting out into going forward. So we aren't going to use these. Like I literally just unwrapped them right now and they've been sitting in storage since I got the bike. But that gets us into how do we actually start changing from one pedal to another? And if you're new to road biking, you're not going to have all the tools required to do so. If you search for how to change your road bike pedals, one of the first things that's going to pop up is that you need a pedal wrench. And this is starting to get to be a little bit intimidating for a lot of people because it's not just, well, I have to buy a bike, now I have to buy a whole bunch of tools to work on that bike. And a lot of bike shop people will say, well, you have to have a pedal wrench. Now I have this wrench here that would be fit for some pedals, but frankly, even I don't use this 12 years after getting my very first bike. We're going to show you how you don't need that pedal wrench and with something as simple as a common wrench that most people will have or an Allen key, you are going to be able to switch over from one set of pedals to another set of pedals regardless of what type of pedals you've got. All right, so what you're gonna have is one of two different scenarios that's going to determine whether you're using just a regular wrench or you're using an Allen wrench. So what we have here is my Canyon Ultimate Road Bike with Shimano Dura-Ace pedals. And the pedals are what you would typically associate with needing a pedal wrench because there's just this little amount of space here in between the axle of the pedal and the crank arm of the bike. So there's just that tiny little eighth of an inch with just a little bit of flat. And you don't wanna use a pair of pliers or a adjustable crescent wrench to try to clamp down on that. Any sort of wrench isn't going to have enough room to bite into that. So this is where you'll be thinking, am I able to actually use something that I have in my toolkit? Well, if we spin it around, and look at the back side of the other set of pedals, what you'll see is that inside the axle here of the pedal, you can actually fit a Allen key in there. So to take off these pedals, when they're set up like that, you just put in an Allen key and you'll have to give it a little bit of a whack because they get tight as you pedal them. And then you can very easily take that out without requiring a pedal wrench. So that's going to be one type of pedal that you might be able to remove with just something as simple as an Allen wrench. Now the other type of pedals that you might have are these. These are the Garmin Rally gravel bike pedals on my Canyon Grail gravel bike. And if you look on the inside of the pedal where we would have used the Allen key to take out these pedals, it's actually filled in. So you wouldn't be able to use that same technique. 
if we go around and show you these pedals here, there's a much bigger area in between the crank arm and the shaft of these pedals to actually fit something that is standard. So what you can use with this is because there's such a big area, you can just use a standard crescent wrench for this and you don't actually need a, a pedal wrench, any sort of specialized tools for that because you're just going to be able to use a crescent wrench for that. Now one little tip that I'll add in and you can use this tip whether you are using a crescent wrench or an Allen wrench to do this is you're going to often have pedals that are very, very tight. So let's just tighten this up and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so let's say you get a pedal and you're working it and you're like, oh, it's just, it's not moving, it's not moving, you can't get it. One thing that you can do to actually break that seal, I'm gonna tell you how to avoid that from fusing in a bit, but if it's fused and it doesn't want to break and the pedal doesn't want to come off, instead of starting the Crescent Wrench over here in the middle of nowhere, set it up really close to the actual crank arm, like this. And what it's going to allow you to do is grab it and by using the leverage of the crank arm, that's going to allow you to get a little bit of leverage, squeeze the crescent wrench into the crank arm, and that's going to help break that fuse between the pedal and the crank arm. But let's talk about how to put the pedal back on properly to make sure that that doesn't happen in the first place. I need to take a minute to thank a sponsor, which is UCAN. Now, UCAN is an excellent blood sugar stable source of carbohydrates. They have what's called super starch, which functions like a carbohydrate, but it doesn't shoot your blood glucose through the roof, causing a crash after. Yes, this is very good for training, but it's also good for day-to-day -day nutrition. I really like taking the UCAN bars, the UCAN granola as a food source that gives me a good amount of carbohydrates and energy while not shooting my blood glucose through the roof, causing a hunger and energy crash later in the day. And then particularly after a workout, I like the UCAN Energy Plus Plant Protein, which is a good way to, again, get the carbohydrates in, start recovering, but also gives you a really nice source of protein. You can go to youcan.co forward slash Taryn, and if you purchase anything after going through that link, you will get a discount that's applied at checkout. Again, that is youcan.co forward slash Taryn, and purchase anything to get a 20% discount. Thanks, Youcan. So I've put some gloves on to show you this, and it might not be a terrible idea, to have some gloves around as you're working on a bike because let's face it, bike is a little bit greasy all around. But what a lot of new cyclists do with their pedals when they put them on is they'll just put them on, tighten them up, and then in the course of turning the pedals, they'll tighten up a lot. And the pedal axle might fuse to the edge of the crank arm. Now to prevent that from happening, there's two things that you should do. Number one, there's a pedal washer that will come with most pedals. And if you lose this, go to a local bike shop, get this replaced. They'll typically give it to you because they'll have them lying around. It's about an eighth of an inch thick and it just goes on top of the axle of the pedal. And it goes in between the edge of the axle of the pedal and the edge of the crank arm to make sure that you've got a little bit of play that nothing's fusing. The second thing that you'll want to do is get some grease. And this is like eight years old. I haven't even made a dent in this. It's gonna cost you maybe five or seven dollars to get this little bit of grease. But every time you put pedal back on, get yourself about a fingernail's worth of grease and put it on the pedal axle before you actually put that pedal back on. That grease and the that grease and the washer is going to prevent it from fusing in and causing an issue where you're going to be stuck and really fighting to get pedals off in the future. This is a big thing. I've heard of people having to drop off their bike and spending $500 in shop time for 
bike shops just to get pedals off because we sweat on our bikes. And when we have things that might fuse together and sweat is getting in and corroding, it might all rust together and you're gonna have a hell of a time actually getting it apart if you don't use that grease and the washer. So now you know how to take off both types of pedals without any special tools. You know how to put pedals back on without causing any sort of future problems and fusing with the pedals, any rusting and corrosion. If you wanna get into the sport and challenge yourself in some road bike races that are anywhere from an hour up to 12, 12 hours, you can do Grand Fondos, you can do crit races, you can do ultra endurance adventures on the bike. We have training plans for that. There is a link in the description below to our training app, which is designed specifically for regular people who want to accomplish awesome things by challenging themselves in endurance events. There's a link in the description below. You can check it out for free for a little while. And if you like it, stick around and you've got training plans for cycling events, running events, triathlons, swim runs, duathlons. And now that you've got a slick set of pedals that you can use, you're gonna rip the race. Later, motivators.